I'm Yana Benun and you are watching Israeli News Live and Denun Institute of Biblical Research and I am with Sophia Smallstorm. We did have her with us a few weeks ago and we discussed 5G and I have brought her in today to discuss a very interesting topic of uh, the reason for the recent death of horses. You will be really interested in what the real reason is and Sophia has put it all together and made sense out of this uh, death of horses that is happening now. And Sophia Smallstorm is a researcher, she's an activist, she's an independent journalist and she interviews a lot of scientists. Welcome Sophia. Yana, you're so kind. How are you? I am doing well. And how about yourself? I'm doing well, thank you. And I'm really into this whole horse. Um, it's like a big jigsaw puzzle. Yes. And, yeah. Definitely. You know, I'm going to soon play the video from your website, sophiasmallstorm.com. Is it? Sophia, tell me your website again. Yeah, that's my blog page. Sophia with an F, smallstorm.com, and I post things that I find very interesting. They take a little more introspection to figure out because I, I put some leading commentary up there, but when you watch the video, that it's a video called TB Deaths, which is not uh, tuberculosis, it's thoroughbred. In the horse world, TB means thoroughbred. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, you know, and you have some really interesting newsletters that you put out. How often you put them out, Sophia? Yeah, thank you, Yana. My newsletter is a monthly, and sometimes I have to do double issues, so that covers two months, and it goes by mail. It's actually hard copy snail mail. I have been doing it since 2010, and in that newsletter, I pretty much record what I've been looking into and connecting for the past few weeks. So the newsletter is the best way to receive information from me because it's not a newsletter. Like it's not boring news taken from the internet and reprinted. It is my, my writing. It's a personal newsletter. It's my writing. It's like essay writing and I do quote and I do give references. And I kind of lead you through different material on a path to connect the whole thing from start to finish. Yes, Sophia, and I do have a, uh, have something to say about it because I have printed, I'm holding it here in my hands right now and showing it to audience, the uh, your newsletter from February 2019. It's called Avatar Update and the subtitle From Hippus to Equus. So you always use this wonderful subtitles. So I will ask you what it all means and why did you call this article this particular uh, subtitle. But as I was reading it, Sophia, preparing for this interview, it really took my interest. And you know, I, I homeschool my children and you have put so much interesting information in this newsletter about horses alone and like for example you describe them as a flight animal not a fight animal and you did such a wonderful job that I have decided to use this newsletter as a uh, science uh, science uh, you know, teaching of science to my daughter. I started to read to her a little bit from the beginning and she took real interest in this. She really wants me to read, read this newsletter to her. So uh, amazing information, Sophia. And then of course you're connecting these deaths of horses to glyphosate. So before we start, I would like to play a video that is on your website, the TB deaths if you don't mind and then let's ask you this question how did you connect the death of these horses to glyphosate so let's us watch 
And it's been a rough start to the racing season at the Del Mar racetrack. It is in the first eight days of the races, veterinarians have had to euthanize seven horses. The outrage growing over a staggering numbering of horses dying at one of the most famous racetracks in the world, Santa Anita. 21 have died there over the last two months. The track is closed now. We want to go to some more breaking news. Another racehorse has died at Santa Anita Park today. Racing had just resumed Friday following the deaths of 22 other horses. Some protest outside Santa Anita Park today is the dirt continues inside. Many people, they're upset over the death of 23 horses. The horses were running from grass to dirt around a corner on the track when the horse named Arms Runner went down. A second animal named La Sardine was right behind and as a result, La Sardine couldn't avoid the fallen horse so he tripped. He managed to get back up and is doing fine right now but Arms Runner had to be put down today. Wow, okay, Sophia. So what is happening to these horses? Well, you know, it started because I, I was looking into the duel of 1973. That was the last year before they patented glyphosate in 1974. But this had nothing to do with my original journey. I was uh, trying to learn more about the horse secretariat because he was he's considered the greatest creature of all time. And he was... Um, he had a 22 pound heart. Normal horses have a nine pound heart. Some good race horses have a 10 pound heart. But Secretary had 22 pounds. And his um, rival that year, 1973, was the colt called Sham. And Sham had a 19 pound heart and they were cousins. And apparently there is no horse on earth that has run faster than Secretariat since 1973. And so I started looking into racehorses just because I watched Secretariat on TV. I mean, that's really where I saw it. I was fascinated. And I learned subsequently, as I was getting interested in racehorses, um, a week after the movie Secretariat aired, I learned that at Santa Anita Track in Arcadia, California, which is near L.A., 500, over 500 horses have met their death through these catastrophic leg injuries at that track alone. And horses have to be put down if they injure their legs. I just was Googling more and horses have like, I don't know how many bones, it's 200 something bones in their body. And most of them, the majority of those bones are in their legs, if you can believe it. Yeah. Their legs are very complex. And so if they, they weigh a thousand pounds, so if they stumble and they break or do a fracture or a bad sprain um, to any part of their foreleg or hoof, most of their weight is actually taken on those two front legs. The horses will not be able to survive because they cannot distribute the entire body weight on just three legs if one, one leg is injured. So, and they can't lie down because then their circulation stops. So they actually have to be standing all the time and they can't stand on three legs. If they do, those legs that are taking their full weight, the three legs, will start buckling and the bones will warp and they'll push through the hoof. This is a condition of inflammation called laminitis. And the horse is just gonna get massive infections in the hoofs and legs and it'll, it'll die anyway. So these race horses, I realized, it didn't take brains to figure that out. These race horses are very, very expensive. I recalled an article I had read years and years ago, actually in 2002, in Harper's Magazine about the Kentucky Derby and how these horses are auctioned, you know, for $5 million and maybe more today, because that was back in the early 2000s before they've ever run a race. And then they run for these purses. The purse in Dubai now for this year is $12 million. A lot of money is poured into their training and their feed, and they have these top trainers and top jockeys riding them. And then after they their racing career is over, which is only a few years, like two, three years, they go to stud farms. And the stud fees, the breeding fees, are just out of your imagination. Some of these horses, American Pharaoh was a racehorse that they studded out for $300,000 a pop. And these horses can encounter, it's called, they, they are introduced to hundreds of mares a year. 
So can you imagine the money, Anna? Mm. And they have to die at three years old because they fell down? Wow, that is tragic in every way imaginable. But is this happening only in California or does it happen in more places? The rate of what they call equine breakdown has been soaring all over the world. Wow. And it, I looked at a website called horseracingwrongs.com. And this, ha this website takes the position that ho racing horses is cruel. And there, were people, there are people who would argue with that and say, no, these horses get excellent fare. But I'm not entering that debate. I am just using the data on horseracingwrongs.com, which is incredible. So Australia, 2016, the race season begins in the summer of 2016, for instance, till the summer of 2017. That's how they do it. So in that particular year, um, from August to the end of July of 2017, 137 horses died on Australian racetracks. So that's one every 2.6 days. And the majority was from the catastrophic limb injuries, breaks, tears, fractures of the foreleg. So 2015, 953 fatal consequences to racehorses just in America. It's happening everywhere and it's just going up, up, up. So wow. since I saw the first report at Santa Anita, there have been three more horses that have uh, had to be euthanized there, and that would be 23 horses since Christmas. Wow, uh, you know, we heard about bees dying, birds dying, fish dying, and masse, you know, but now these horses, what a phenomena, but what, what does the mainstream uh, media say? What do they say about why is this happening? They are pointing to the track, and the track surface. So I looked into that and I found out that there was a brief love affair. I think this was worldwide with synthetic tracks called like poly track. And these are horrible, horrible things. They're made of ground up tires and bits of synthetic carpet and bits of like telephone insulation, the wires, the plastic, and it's all coated in wax. And then they smear it on the track and this is of the surface that the horses are supposed to run on now they want to bring this poly track surface poly track is just one brand name there are other brand names to every playground in america for all the school children to play on and it reeks of petroleum it's just pure chemicals that's all it is yes. and they did this at the race courses but then they took them all out and they went back to dirt and grass. And that was, I think that love affair with the, uh, or experimentation with the synthetic track surfaces ended around 2015. So everything is back to turf, which is grass or dirt. And um, it has rained in Southern California, but one horse expert from a horse training Hall of Fame family told me recently that the rain has been much worse in the past. And so it's not the rain and the horse industry is also now debating whether they should use the riding crop, the whips on the horses. Because you have to think about it, you know, imagine if we did this to our children. So horses are auctioned before they've ever run a race, when they're like a year old. And they're auctioned for millions of dollars. So that would be the equivalent of like a kindergartner or a nursery school kid we took our children at that age four or five years old and we auctioned them and paid millions of dollars for them and then we trained them to run as fast as they could and we put them on tracks and whipped them and made them race as first second and third graders and the horses are racing at 40 miles an hour so imagine if we made our children do that they would fall down and they their legs would break because there's another video I want people to see and find it on your own. It is Samantha Serio, the gymnast who on April 8th took a catastrophic landing. She did a backflip, a double backflip, and she landed on her two feet, but her knees could not take the stress and they buckled 
backwards, backwards, both yes. of them at the same time. It's and shocking. that is the end of her gymnastics career. Shocking to watch, very disturbing to watch. It is on your website, on your sophiasmallstorm.com blog. So everybody can go see this video right there. And you will be, you know, just shocked what's happening, uh, what happened to this lady, particular lady. But then you, Sophia, have connected these two things to something, this is something extremely interesting that is happening. Can you please tell us what is your opinion? Why horses are dying? And why, why should we people in a general have all these, you know, because so many people write to me as well. I, I used to be sick in 2017. I had a very bad disease. So a lot of people write me, how did you survive your illness? And I have this problem and this problem and this problem. And do you have any solution? And, you know, I am an ex nurse, but I'm by no means a medical doctor. So I always try to point people to a natural therapies. But Sophia, so many people suffer with fragile bones and bone pain and fragile bones and uh, breakage of bones, you know? So, and you, in your newsletter, you have connected these deaths of, of horses and all these bone problems in people to something. So I want you to talk about that now. So let's remember that the deaths of the horses are the step past the injury. So that I feel there's a direct correlation between the injuries of horses and the injuries of people with the failing tissues. The musculoskeletal tissues are failing at escalating rates. And this is because, I believe, of the glyphosate component that is taking the place of the glycine amino acid in our bones, in our joints, in our muscle tissues. So let's figure out how that happens. In 1974, Monsanto patented glyphosate. It's a man-made material, compound. You could call it a chemical. And you know what? It was actually discovered. It was synthesized in 1950 by a Swiss chemist, but I don't think it was patented at the time. And in the 60s, they used it, Jana, to blow out the crud in factory chimneys. It is a mineral chelator. So it was used to clean out factory chimneys because all of that lead, arsenic, all of the materials, minerals that, that accumulate, it's called flue dust, baghouse dust, glyphosate, gets rid of that, it pulls it all out. So that's how they used to use glyphosate in the 60s. And then in the 70s, they had the bright idea because it was a bactericide. It was pat patented as an antimicrobial in farming. And um, they started using it to weaken crops right before harvest as a drying agent. It gives plants a um, an acute state of dehydration, you could call it plant AIDS. And when plants or crops are sprayed with glyphosate, they start to wither, they get brittle. Now it's easier to cut them down. So you whack down all the wheat, the alfalfa, the oats, all the grain crops, all the core crops, sugar, barley, legumes, uh, lentils, garbanzo beans, but the sugar beets and the sugar cane as well, rice. Okay, so all these grain crops are sprayed with glyphosate and that makes them more brittle and easier to harvest and you can fit more in the transport trucks because now they're dried out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And when you think about how much hay horses eat, they eat tons of hay and oats and um, they sleep in straw. So they're in this stuff day and night. And if these crops have been treated with glyphosate, then that glyphosate is entering the horse's bodies. And it's doing a very, very dangerous thing. Glyphosate, the molecule, is the exact same thing as the simplest, most beautiful, sleek, supple amino acid in biology called glycine. 
they are identical, except the nitrogen atom in glyphosate has this methyl phosphonyl chain stuffed into it. And side chains are complicated to explain. You have to be kind of a biochemist to understand them. But they have to do with the hydrophilic or hydrophobic, water-loving or water-rejecting properties of that, that molecule and the way that the molecule bonds to other things. But suffice it to say, I will give you a visual. Let's picture a most gorgeous, sleek, little compact car. Brand new design, a joy to drive off the, you know, auto manufacturer's assembly line from Italy or whatever. And then, well, let's call that glycine. Let's now picture the exact same car, same design, same everything, except the door one of the doors is jammed open. It's just sticking out. Now that is glyphosate. Glyphosate's nitrogen atom makes the whole assembly unwieldy. So let, let's, let's imagine driving that car with the door open. How is it gonna be? That car is going to misbehave on the road. It's going to swerve. It's going to be buffeted by wind with that door open. It's going to hit things, it's going to hit people, it's going to cause accidents, it's not going to fit into parking spots, it's going to be a horror to drive. And that's what happens in our body. When glycine, the simplest amino acid, is um, replaced because they're so similar with glyphosate, when you have glyphosate coursing through your body and your poor body is a biochemical blind man and goes, oh, oh this is glycine, and the DNA in your body codes for all these proteins to be made with glycine, and your body is now making them out of glyphosate, then your proteins are going to fail. And proteins are the structural components of the body. They're found in your blood vessels. They're found in your muscle tissue, in your bones, in your cartilage, in your joints, in your skin. And so here we are with this crashing, burning, malfunctioning um, protein because it's made with this amino acid that's malfunctioning and crashing and burning. So what is the principal protein in joints and in tendons and ligaments and bones? Collagen. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And one quarter, if not one third of collagen is made of glycine properly. And collagen is this beautiful triple helix. Now, I have to credit Dr. Stephanie Seneff of MIT because she has done, along with Dr. Anthony Samsell, this series of papers about glyphosate. Um, it's a series you can find online. These are scientific papers, glyphosate, colon, subtitled, Pathways to Modern Diseases. And in paper number five by Dr. Stephanie Seneff and Dr. Anthony Samsell, they talk about amino acid analog of glycine in diverse proteins, which is glyphosate. So the body is mistakenly synthesizing or making its collagen out of glyphosate instead of glycine. And the collagen in the body, when it's made of glycine, it holds water. So now picture a material that is loose and supple and flexible because it holds water. If it doesn't hold water, that same material is going to be brittle and it's going to break. So my theory was when I heard about all these horses racing at 40 miles an hour on these legs made of, on which they, you know, they have to have properly functioning joints and ligaments and tendons and bones and hoofs. The keratin in the hoofs is made of, of glyphosate now um, instead of glycine. And they're falling down, they're stumbling, and they're breaking their bones and their, their joints in these terrible ways at this very high rate. I said to myself, this is because they're absorbing glyphosate and it's being synthesized into their proteins. So what do you think of that, Jana? I, it really makes sense, Sophia, you know? And as you describe in your newsletter, we are a complex biological organisms, and we depend on natural compounds for our bodies. And when they replace these natural things with a synthetic 
uh, things. You know, like you are describing how this glyphosate is basically a synthetic glycine, right? It's a yes. It's, it's a, the same except for that one difference, which makes it bulky and makes it smash and break. Yeah, it's the same thing as when they make these synthetic vitamins. You know, it reminds me when they make synthetic vitamins it's called Centrum, for example, that they sell everywhere in Walgreens and CVS pharmacies, and they tell you, "Oh, take these synthetic vitamins." And they're all made in labs, you know, and next thing you know, they're not working. They're not being absorbed. Our bodies reject synthetic substitutes. So I can only imagine that the synthetic glyphosate, which is a synthetic glycine, does a havoc in our bodies. What does it do to our hormonal balance? You know, because when you're out of hormonal balance, doesn't that have effect on our bones as well, Sophia? Well, what glycine does, sorry, not glycine, glyphosate does to plants, and this is why the plants fail so radically when they're, they're treated with glyphosate, mm -hmm. it shuts down something called the shikimate pathway in plants and bacteria and microorganisms. So higher life forms cannot make everything that they use. They sometimes outsource the production of certain critical materials to lower life forms. So we have living in our gut, you know, a quadrillion bacteria, all different kinds. We're supposed to have 20 to 30,000 different kinds, which we don't have anymore because our soil is so destroyed and doesn't have uh, bacterial diversity in it. And we'll talk about how you can fix that and it's not with probiotics. So the shikimate pathway in plants is a seven-step organic chemistry process that produces three amino acids that the plants need for their own immune defense. And these are three amino acids that the animal world cannot make. And they are called phenylalanine, tryptophan, and tyrosine. And they are very important, phenylalanine, for our brain and plasma. It's a pain reliever, Yana. It's a pain reliever. Wow. It's a precursor of many neurotransmitters like adrenaline. Mm. So without phenylalanine, which we get from the bacteria in our gut, and we get it from the plants in the world that we eat, without phenylalanine, we cannot respond to stress properly. And we don't have... The pro this is the zombification of the world. They, people that don't have the proper physiological stress response, when they're supposed to be alarmed and concerned, they're just sitting there zoned out on their phones. So tryptophan is a precursor of serotonin, which is another neurotransmitter, and it's a very important sleep promoter. And without it, we not only have insomnia, but we become very aggressive with bigger appetites and carbohydrate cravings. So right there, that explains another characteristic of life today. So tyrosine is an antidepressant. So without it, we become depressed. So you see, these important amino acids that the plants and bacteria make for us are not happening because of glyphosate. And this is why plants die, because their own immune defense it plummets and pathogens in the soil start to get the better of them. So we, when you ask what it's doing to our bones, it's not just doing that to our bones, it's doing that to the whole culture of bacteria and organisms that live inside us. And it's robbing us of these very, very important amino acids that are part of our neurotransmission, part of our, our own defense systems in different kinds of ways, you know, our alertness is part of our defense. Mm -hmm. Sophia, the gluten allergy that most people have these days, you know, they cannot eat gluten, they get very sick and swollen in the tummy. Uh, in fact, my husband has this particular allergy and I'll talk about later what really helped him. It was one of the products that you sell in your store that you have advised and we have tried it and it has done miracles for him. But we will talk at the end about that. But can you talk a little bit about gluten allergy connected to uh, glyphosate? Right, so gluten is a protein. It's a protein found in wheat. 
And when gluten is made with glyphosate instead of glycine, then it becomes indigestible. So these are not allergies. This is the body rejecting something that it doesn't know how to break down. Because here's what the body can do. When the body misfolds or miss creates a protein, it can denature it, take it apart, and build it again. But it cannot do so if something contains glyphosate, because by the time it's figured out that it's made a mistake in the synthesis of this particular protein, and it tries to take it apart, and imagine how much energy is spent on this. And then it comes to the glyphosate, and it goes, well, I don't know what to do with this. I cannot take this apart. Hmm. That glyphosate begins to turn into very toxic compounds in your system. And glyphosate is something, when you when it enters your digestive tract, in the when it's folded into other um, foods, your body goes, I don't know what to do with this. And immediately, your body opens its gut wall. The gut wall is a membrane. And it starts in your head, in your mucosal passages, it goes down your throat, it's through your intestines, goes all the way to your butt. And if you were to take that gut wall, it's one cell thick, it's a membrane. If you were to take that membrane and spread it out, it would be the size of two tennis courts. Mm. And the cells making up that membrane are, they are next to one another, and the gaps in between them are called tight junctions. And this is a form of intelligent system in the body, the tight junctions between the cells of the gut wall. And as soon as you get glyphosate in your gut, your body goes, oh, I don't like this. And it issues zonulin, which is another protein, and the zonulin tells the gut wall to open up because now your body wants to draw water from the bloodstream so it can push this glyphosate out. Mm -hmm. But when the gut wall opens, some of that glyphosate escapes into the blood. Now it's roaming around. Now your body's going to think it's glycine. It's going to make proteins out of it. So that's the problem, that this intolerance or allergies, as people call it, to gluten is actually opening their gut wall and it's allowing that glyphosate to escape. Yeah. And the product, well, you might as well just throw it in now instead of making people hang off the edge of their seat. Sure. <laughs> the product is Restore. Restore was created by Dr. Zach Bush and a very brilliant scientific team. And we could do a whole show on Restore, but Restore is not a formulation per se. Restore is an extract from Earth in the American Southwest desert and restore puts in your body the missing carbons that no longer exist in the soil today. And once you get those missing carbons from ancient soil, because that's what the desert is. The desert is ancient soil compressed and hardened and dried out. No modern farming has ever been done on desert earth. So Dr. Bush figured out that if he went and got earth from the desert and made this watery extract out of it, it's called the lignite extract, and people took a teaspoon of this before they ate, Restore serves to shut your gut wall against that escaping glyphosate. And Restore puts these carbons this diversity of carbon, they're called metabolites, back in your system. And the carbons speak an ancient electrical language. You can call it, catchword would be redox signaling to the mitochondria in your cells. And that regulates a huge part of your health. So I can get into that more, but just know that your body is not functioning optimally for many, many reasons. And the gut is considered the, let's just call it the um, wellness brain of the body. Wouldn't you say that? Yeah, well, you know, how much percentage, maybe 70% of your immune system is in your gut? Well, the technical breakdown of that is that your bloodstream, your white blood cells are on the other side of your gut wall and they make your antibodies. 
So that expression, 70% of the immune system is in your gut, really comes from the idea that the waiting bloodstream makes this enormous number of antibodies, and that's the core, one big component of your immune system. It's called the humoral immune system. Yeah. So well, the gut enables the protection of your body through many different reflexes that it has, like diarrhea, vomiting, through the opening and closing, the intelligent opening and closing of its tight junctions, and restore those um, those carbon metabolites that restore puts back in your body. You see, we cannot we cannot replace the missing bacteria that we're supposed to have in our gut because you just can't get it anymore. Between the chemical pesticides that they've been using, the chemical fertilizers that they've been using, and now all of this very noxious herbicide that they use, the soil bacterial diversity has gone way down. In fact, Yana, um, each one of us is supposed to have 20,000 to 30,000 different types of bacteria in our body, in our gut, and we don't. We just don't. It takes 44 people together to come up with 10,000 varieties. Instead of one person having 20,000, 44 people have 10,000 together. Yes. Well, you know, I have to tell people our own experience with Restore when it comes to my husband. And most of our listeners know Steve very well. And they know that he had gluten, as we call it, allergy, or as doctor calls it, allergy. But you have explained so beautifully what it actually is and what's happening. And in fact, your research is priceless. It's amazing how you can explain all of this. Sophia, thank you so much. I mean, you fascinate me all the time. And I am like a fish in the water when I listen to this information. I just love listening to you. But I want to tell you about Restore, and I'm holding it here in my hand, showing it to people. This is a 32 fluorid ounces, and it's good for two months uh, supply for, for one person. And my husband has gone, you know, he was extremely swollen until he got this e, uh, IBS that was so painful he couldn't function anymore and so we finally decided which he we used to eat a lot of gluten like pastas and breads that was kind of a weakness but i have forced him to go to gluten-free diet which helped a lot and then of course we got rid of all sugar because that was compounding these problems right which you are, i'm sure you would agree with that so he was uh, he did this kind of you know, um, changes to his diet, which helped, but he still had pain and discomfort. And then after meeting you and talking to you, you have told me about Restore. You said, oh, Yana, you know, he definitely needs to start Restore. So we took your word for it, started Restore. And when he took it within three days, Sophia, his pain gone away, no longer any pain. And he tells me, you know, whatever herbs and all these supplements you're giving me and changing diet really help. But this thing, the restore, that was the thing I was missing. And I don't know what it is you're giving me. <laughs> That's what he said. And he said, but it really helped my pain. But not only this, Sophia, what happened is that when we go out, especially on our conferences or with friends, you know, we, we don't just don't have much choice to cook for ourselves and stuff. He would we would go out to eat and he started ordering you know pasta in a in a italian restaurant and i told him you know you're eating pasta you're going to be sick again sophia he didn't get sick it you know normal non-gluten-free pasta like a normal pasta didn't cause him a problem as long as he had a restore do you think that 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 had restore has something to do with this I, i'm not saying he's going back to his uh regular gluten foods he's not but when he had no choice of course but it just this time it just didn't cause him problem yes yana um dr zach bush i listened to many many presentations by dr bush when i learned about restore and i was floored i started to use restore myself i had a little bit of irritable 
digestive stuff going on and restore help tremendously. But I have heard from many, many people who have radical relief from it in such a short time. And that's because it lowers your, um, your production of zonulin. It keeps that gut wall closed. And the other thing I have to tell you is they just did a clinical trial, the Restore Team, on human beings. It just was published. It's on my blog. And Restore eliminates 23% of glyphosate from your system within two weeks. Wow. That is remarkable. It really is. Wow. So, yes, it's very possible. Zach Bush says that when people who are gluten intolerant take Restore for a few weeks, they will actually begin, a lot of them, to be able to eat things with gluten again, which is a relief because, as you say, you know, you can't avoid it constantly. Sometimes you're stuck. Right. And, you know, Sophia, coming back to solutions, we really will never eliminate glyphosate, I don't believe, within our generation because these companies and corporations, they're denying that glyphosate does any harm, as you know. So they are not about to stop using it, you know. In fact, it's used more and more, even in vaccines, which I don't want to talk about vaccines right now, but yes, they're putting it in vaccines. And aluminum in vaccines make glyphosate even more potent, okay. And, when, and I was just reading on some other uh, scientific article how when they use this Roundup, but they use glyphosate, they put other ingredients in it that make glyphosate more potent. Can you believe this? So all these other ingredients within it make glyphosate more, more potent. I was just reading it this morning. But anyway, we are not going to eliminate glyphosate. So what's the only solution we have, Sophia? What's the only thing we can do is to cleanse our organism, you know, to cleanse our bodies and detox from it. So we, like you said, restore. Well, there are a couple of things you can do to detox from glyphosate. One is to use Restore to keep your gut wall tight. And also, I have to just throw this in, and people can buy Restore from my website, and I really urge you to, if you buy the 32 ounce from avatarproducts.com, you will get a free pump, and it makes it so much easier to use. Um, I didn't know about the pumps till a customer told me, and people were annoyed because they were spilling it, and it's expensive, and mm -hmm. that, but it's so worth it right, if you right. have issues. And I'm going to tell a couple of my own stories with Restore. So now I just give the pump for free with their large bottle orders. I just want you to know that I had a broken eardrum for many, many years, and I suspect this was because of my cordless phone, because I didn't know back then when the cordless phones came out that they are just as bad as cell phones. So I was walking all over the house with the cordless phone, talking away, talking away. And I noticed after a while that I started feeling that my right eardrum, it was like a moth was trapped in my ear. I could hear this fluttering. And it wouldn't happen all the time, but when it started to happen, sometimes it would persist for several hours. And it would happen sometimes at night, and it would keep me up. And I knew it had something to do with my eardrum, and later I connected it to use of the cordless phone, so I quit. But I couldn't do anything. There was nothing to stop that eardrum from fluttering like a butterfly in my ear. And I lived with this for 10 years. And then, when I started Restore, Within two months, I realized, oh, I don't have that anymore. What is that from? And all I can say is, it's got to be restored, and I will tell you why. So, Yana, we don't digest our food. Did you know that? We eat it, we cook it, we like it, we swallow it, but we cannot liberate the fats and the proteins from our food we and need, the sugars. We need enzymes, right, Sophia? We, enzymes help, but it's the bacteria that live in our gut that do that job. Wow. wow. So those quadrillion bacteria, they are the ones that digest our food. And for the bacteria to live, they have to make this carbon molecule. I call it like a motorcycle sidecar. If each bacteria is a motorcycle, it has to have this carbon attached to it, which gives it its energy. So now, let's go back to that magic number. We're supposed to have 
20 to 30,000 different kinds of bacteria. We have trillions, maybe a quadrillion in number, but they're supposed to be across a spectrum of many different types, 20,000, 30,000 different types. And we're all running at less than 10% of that. And now we cannot get that from the food we eat because the soil is messed up. So where are we going to get all these bacteria? Some people take probiotics. I'm going to tell, tell you something. Probiotics are made from cow's intestines. They are cow's bacteria, not our bacteria. Hmm. I, you know, I, I didn't know this detail. Good you're telling me because I'm a vegan. <laughs> That's true too. Now listen. The probiotics are copies. They're like Xeroxes. So a, a probiotic with 12 different strains, and they tell you how many millions of organisms are in each capsule. Those are like Xerox photocopies of some probiotics are only three strains. But regardless, they're all taken from cows. And this is a multi-million dollar industry that has just boomed. But the fact is, those that introduction of a few more species may help for a little while, but after a while, most people say, I don't know what to do. My probiotics aren't doing much for me. I, now I have pain again. Right. So what Restore does is, because nothing can bring you the bacteria, unless you go to you know the middle of Africa, to the jungle, and you breathe deeply, and you wallow in the dirt, and you, you know, you you just eat from the land there and if there are no chemicals ever introduced you got to find a place where there are no chemicals no modern farming or modern anything and that will bring you a bigger spectrum of bacteria which will make these carbon molecules because these carbon sidecars that each bacterial type makes has a direct communication with your mitochondria in your cells so now i'll talk numbers again you're supposed to have 20 to 30,000 different bacteria types, which would each make a different carbon. These carbons are all different. They're um, metabolites. They have different facets and binding sites. So all these carbon sidecars, you'd maybe have 20,000 different kinds of those. That's ideal. And I want to remind people that the energy makers of the cell, they are called the mitochondria. They are separate little organisms, organelles, they're called. And they derive from ancient bacteria. They're not human. So in all your cells, except for mature red blood cells, there are mitochondria generating energy, generating energy, generating energy. And this is an ancient bacterial variant. So you've got bacteria in your gut with your carbon sidecars, and you've got bacter uh, bacterial derivatives in your cells called mitochondria. Now, let's say you have how many different kinds of tissues and cells? Let's say 30,000. So you want all the different types of bacteria in your gut with their carbon mouthpieces talking this ancient electrical language called redox signaling to the thousands of different kinds of mitochondria in your thousands of different kinds of cells. And if you're running at less than 10% of bacteria in your gut, your health is functioning at 10% because it's that language, the electrical language that's exchanged between the mitochondria and the gut bacteria's carbons that regulates such a giant portion of your health. So when Restore replaces in your body, not the bacteria, but their carbons. The carbons are in the desert. They never go away. They're not alive. So when Restore puts these crucial languaging molecules back or atoms back in your gut, they talk that important electrical language to your cells. And now your cells are in the proper communication and are doing their proper regulation. This is why Restore restores. You know, that's amazing. And I didn't know that about my mitochondria. I didn't know that about origins. Wow. And how important it is. You know, uh, I want you to talk about organic produce because, you know, a lot of people would say, well, we are eating organic. Yeah, we're spending a little more money, but we try to avoid glyphosate and all that with buying organic. So what is your uh, opinion on that one? 
I would say it's really important if you're going to buy organic to buy from small farmer because here's the truth. These big organic farms that can afford the fees, the fees are very expensive to be certified organic. Mm-hmm. And I know this because I befriended small farmers at farmer's market for several years, and I heard it all from them. And in California, it's 4000 a year to be certified organic, and then you have to share a part of your gross with the state of California. And these poor farmers who are literally, they just have a few acres, and they each grow a few different things, and they come to the farmer's market, they can't spend the 4000 to be certified. And they would put up these banners that said, no chemicals. And the guy from the Department of Agriculture would come by and order them to take that down. Because organic really means no chemical pesticides. And another farmer told me, it does not mean no chemical fertilizers. And in California, which is a huge produce state, produces food for the world, not just for America. California allows organic farmers, certified organic farmers, to put 200 different, 250 different types of chemical fertilizers on their crops. So it's misleading then. It's really misleading to to think that organic produce is safe. Right. It's safe if you know your farmer and if he vouches for his product, his produce, and says, I don't use any chemicals whatsoever in the form of fertilizer. Now, I'll give you an example. I was at the market and I heard one of the farmers tell a customer that his strawberries, customer said, are these organic strawberries? He said, well, they're about 70% organic. (laughs) And I thought, huh? (laughs) <laughs> so I went to him. I said, this was after the customer left. I said, so what, is, what do you mean 70% organic? And he said, well, I use a little bit of chemical fertilizer. So I would say 70% organic because some of what I put on it is chemical fertilizer. Oh, wow. That, that is misleading, you know? Well, Sophia, um, Anything else for solutions? You told us about Restore. Is there anything else we can do to cleanse our bodies from, from glyphosate that you know I of? I would say, you know, if you avoid it as much as possible, if you po- can, but it's in the air. Yana, last year, they took it off patent in 2007. So it's not Monsanto's baby anymore. Last year alone, 4 billion kilos of glyphosate were used in the world and 99.9% of it never meets a weed because it's used as a drying agent. So, you know, they have these lawsuits that have been settled now in the favor of the plaintiffs, two lawsuits involving glyphosate, uh, Roundup and cancer um, issues. Mm-hmm. And fine, you could take Roundup off the shelves, but what if everybody still uses glyphosate as a drying agent? That's right. right? That's right. So, so glyphosate is sold, it's, a lot of it is made in China now, 4 billion kilos right now per year, and Zach Bush said in one of his earlier presentations, 2016 was 2 billion kilos. And there is a compound called chlorine dioxide. This is the resultant um, compound that you get when you mix you know the product MMS, which is banned from America. You know, it's, yes. We, in fact, we had a Miss Rivera on the other day about MMS. If you know her, uh, she is a homeopath who claims with a lot of stories behind it. In, in fact, one of my really good friends with four autistic children is now using MMS for autism. And uh, she's having very good success helping her children with autistic symptoms. So I had Miss Rivera on explaining about MMS, which is what you say, chlorine dioxide. So do you think that is also a good idea to use? Dr. Stephanie Senek gave a presentation. It's on my blog. You have to scroll down for it, probably from last year, but you can find it on YouTube, where she explains that chlorine dioxide is one of the few things we know of that can actually break glyphosate down into useful components. 
So there is no dosage that I know of as to how much chlorine dioxide to take. You can buy chlorine dioxide already made. You don't have to mix it with the MMS components, the um, sodium chloride and the citric acid. But uh, you're on your own as to how much, how many drops to take. But she said, now we have to remember that why the body uses oxidants. Chlorine dioxide is a very powerful oxidant. True. So we always hear about antioxidants, antioxidants. So the body actually uses and makes its own oxidants. Oxidants are like hammers. They bash molecules apart in order to get atoms separated and used in different ways. So when you have too many things bashing and banging in your body, then you want to offset all of that activity with antioxidants. And so that's why we're told to take antioxidants, but we also need oxidants. And oxidants like chlorine dioxide are known to break down glyphosate. I learned from Dr. Senna. So that would be another way. Restore, if you look at the testimonials online, Restore also helps autistic children remarkably. Yes. And so I would say these things in combination might be something people would want to try. But again, you you would have to find some kind of naturopath or health practitioner who's versed in this to guide you, or you have to kind of take it very cautiously and figure it out yourself. There's no, no doctor is likely to tell you about these things. That's right. Well, Sophia, thank you so much. Right now, uh, to just kind of summarize everything, I would like for you to talk about your websites again, so people know how to find you, where to go, when they want to shop for Restore and other things. What other things do you have on your in your avatar store? I, right now, you know, there are very few things in that store, um, but they are things that are tried and true. They work for me. That's how I add things to the store. And I became a very active seller of Restore because I ended up looking into the way it works in terms of biochemistry and redox signaling. And I was able to explain it in interviews like this one. And so people bought it. And if you buy anything from me, you actually help me to survive. So otherwise, I wouldn't even be able to take the time to do this research. So one of my top sellers is iodine. I have different kinds, and they all work, but they're tailored to budget and people's preference, you know, in terms of how much money they want to spend for how many ounces. And then magnesium products are absolutely very popular. The magnesium cream may be the best seller. I have it in jars now. It's an amazing pain reliever if you have joint pain, muscle pain. But I also have a magnesium gel, which is a fantastic deodorant. Um, it's antimicrobial, and you just smear a little bit in your armpits, and you end up um, having a natural deodorant that your body loves because it gets right into the lymph. There's a laundry powder. I believe I sent you a sample. Yes, I it. It. amazing. Yeah. I, I will use it now because I had no chance yet to use it, but I'm about to use it, so I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> yeah, you know, people approach me. The manufacturer of the laundry powder, that's made of pure Castile soap. It's her grandmother's recipe. It is fantastic. It's a little bit of soda ash, baking soda, and um, a little borax. And that stuff is so fantastic and forgiving. It is not a detergent, but all you need is a tablespoon in an entire wash load and your clothes come out so clean and so soft and they smell so wonderful. So this woman approached me and said, would you like to try selling my laundry powder? And I am all over it. I think it's fantastic. I have Himalayan soap berries. Those come from the Sapindus mucorosi tree and they're natural cleaning agents and you just pop a little sack of them in your washing machine and washes your clothes and you use them over and over again and they cost almost nothing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are very good for colored clothes and I think I would use the laundry powder for the whites. But all of this is stuff that real people like myself, like you, Yana, have approached me with and have said, do you want to sell this? And I work with chemists. We come up with different, like a magnesium roll-on deodorant. That was my idea. The gel was my idea. And um, so I'm happy to be able to, you know, kind of just brainstorm and 
none of the things are that expensive. Restore seems expensive, but when you realize that it's basically $30 a month, $35 a month, and everything that it does for you, you know? Well, considering how it helped my husband, he was almost not able to work, Sophia. I mean, it was a constant pain. And then you know how it is when you live with a person with a constant pain and when you cannot even eat. I mean, we didn't know what to make for him anymore. And uh, yes, he did adjustments to diet, which helped. But as you say, glyphosate is in everything because they use it as a drying agent. So even if you give him lentils or anything like that. So this restore was an answer for my husband. And I am telling you the truth with our own experience out of own mouth of my husband. So I want to put my children on it as well and my elderly father. So we will be getting this from you very soon, within a few days, even more of it. And I highly recommend it personally. We love the product. And of course, if you can have a product that helps and you buy it from someone like you, Sophia, who actually does such a priceless research, you know what you're doing is a service to humanity. And this is why I have you on, because I hope that my listeners will understand why I brought you on. I think that you connecting these death of these animals, these beautiful animals as you describe them in your newsletter, the first two or three pages are just amazing to read. Uh, my, my daughter enjoyed it. She got very angry for, for these horses dying. She's, an, by the way, um, vegetarian and animal activist, you know? So she gets really, uh, she gets hurt when she hears stories like that. So you describe these animals so beautifully. It's really interesting reading, but then when you connected the death of these animals to glyphosate, and then we know that it's hurting even us humans and children and elderly, you know? So you are doing a service to humanity, Sophia. Can you please tell us more about your website a little bit? Yeah, I will happily do that. I always want to throw in one more thing. Yana, the rate of orthopedic injuries in children who should not be breaking bones when they're very young, 9, 10, 11 years old, playing Little League, but the rate of failure in those um, proteinaceous tissues in human beings, the knee and hip replacements at younger and younger ages in adults. I mean, people in their 40s are, and 50s are having hip and knee replacements. All of this goes right along with how much glyphosate has been used in our lives, uh, not to our knowledge. And it's not just the weed killer. It is the drying, as we mentioned. Yes, and in the, it's in the vaccines, you know. When that they, too, right. Yes. So, so, Yana, yeah, my website is avatarproducts.com, and I do send freebies with almost every order. Um, we do charge for shipping. I'm so sorry, but we cannot do free shipping. I want people to know that when Amazon does free shipping, it ships to centers on these pallets. So the cost of each item to get to a delivery hub is really like pennies and small sellers like me cannot afford that we have to ship through the post office and they just raised the shipping again but i try to provide people with a one ounce tube of magnesium gel if you order the cream or sometimes you get a little half ounce bottle of iodine a different brand and these items are worth three to five dollars and you wouldn't have to pay for a full you know, full tube or full jar or full bottle. You can try it for free. We get bumper stickers for free. Yes. Say what you did with the bumper sticker. Yes, well, you know, what I want to say to people, if you order, let's say, from Amazon, you never get anything free. You never get these kind presents that you get from Sophia. But she sent me these bumper stickers. Think, think while it's still legal. So I have put one on my car, but then when we had this conference here recently in Orlando, Florida, uh, I just have put them out there for people, you know, just to take whoever is interested. But they were gone, Sophia, in, in a matter of seconds. People really well, thought that it's very cute and they wanted them. 
Well, you can get more from me. I, I'm yeah. just about to print more, and I'm going to print a bunch, like a thousand. And so if you want to order some at a low cost for your tables, I'd be happy to. And I have a couple of others. But yeah, think while it's still legal. That's a bumper sticker I created uh, last year. That's right. And you do get the freebies. And so my store is Avatar, A-V-A-T-A-R, avatarproducts.com. And my blog is sophiasmallstore.com, Sophia with an F. And you can subscribe to my newsletter. There's a little tab that says newsletters. You can read some of them. The newsletter is a donation of a minimum of $50 per year. And all I need is a check or a money order. Um, I don't really do that by PayPal or credit card. And then you'll get my issues for a year. So thank you. Yes, and thank you, Sophia, for everything you're doing for us, for all this research uh, as an independent journalist and interviewer of very important people that have very important things to say. Um, and what I wanted to say, this is not the only thing you're talking about, like life will say. Tell us some other subjects that you went into really deeply. Well, I'm looking at electricity. I'm reading Arthur Furstenberg's book, which... Uh, a fan of mine, a very nice person, Michael, if you're listening to this, I have to thank you from the bottom of my heart because he sent me the book, The Invisible Rainbow by Arthur Furstenberg. And I am making my way through that very carefully. I have a million stickies in it. My next newsletter is going to focus on this book, probably a few of them. There are things I'm getting out of this book that will blow your mind and that I'm relating to what I already know. So each newsletter is a synthesis of in new information that I'm getting with old information that I know to create a new, you know, understanding that I'm having. So yeah, anybody who wants to subscribe to the newsletter is welcome to. I fold it with my own hands and put it in the envelope and it'll be mailed to you and it will be coming at, you know, intervals of approximately a month. Yes, and I want to say some other subjects, even if you didn't mention them and you think they're kind of old, but they're not old to many people, Sophia, like geoengineering, Morgellon syndromes, a lot of people suffering from Morgellons, you know. Then you also dealt with chemtrails, which is geoengineering, basically. And so I want to have you on again, and maybe we can uh, go into some another interesting subjects. We can all learn from you, myself included. I learn from you a lot, and I truly enjoy all of your research, Sophia. So thank you so much, and I hope that my listeners, our listeners here in Israeli News Live and the Noon Institute, that you have enjoyed uh, this research that Sophia Smallstorm provides for us just as much as we did. Thank you very much for coming, Sophia. It is my pleasure. I think you are a lovely person, Yana. It is so fun to know you and do interviews with you. And the way you've shared this information, it's from your heart. And that's what counts, you know. We just, we're not here to scare people. We're here to share from our hearts that's... and become inspired and empowered. You're right. A lot of people say we are like, uh, what do they call it? Like you scaring people. Uh, I don't know. Fear mongering. Fear mongering. That's it. Sometimes English words don't come easy to me, you know. Like I need a ton of coffee to just say one normal English word in the morning. I apologize. But uh, this restore, I can tell you, and I'm holding it again. This is a personal personal testimony of my husband that he can still be online and do news in Israeli News Live because he was so sick, Sophia. And even though we already like kind of ending this, I have to bring it up again. This is what really helped him. That's what keeps him uh, pain free right now. And this is that my husband will not go without this. So I strongly recommend this for anybody suffering like my husband does. And for many other things, as Sophia says, and I am about to start it, and so my children and my elderly father that lives with us. But anyway, we are at the end, Sophia. Thank you again. Thank you all for watching and listening. And we will see you soon here with Sophia Smallstorm again. Goodbye.